the plain distance scheme is fine for split systems, but in situations where we have possible fault current flowing in from both ends of the feeder, it's not suitable, and therefore we need to come up with a different scheme. We do this by putting an impedance relay at each end of the feeder. We set up a zone 1 for end A and a zone 1 for end B. Let's look at the characteristics. As usual, the direction is forward, looking down the line, the reach is 80% of the line length, and the zone 1 delay is 0. We use the same characteristics for MB. Let's now energise the feeder. As we can see, at end A, the load characteristic is well outside the zone 1 protection coverage. At end B, the load current is flowing in the reverse direction, so the load characteristic appears in quadrant 3 of the impedance graph. Let's now add a fault halfway down the protected line. As this is a solid system, fault current now flows in from both ends of the feeder. The fault is at 50% of the line length, and therefore it falls well within the zone 1 impedance characteristic for end A and end B. Both relays now trip their relevant circuit breakers instantaneously, clearing the fault from the system. Let's now reset the circuit. Let's now add a fault at 10% of the line length near to end A. This time, at end A, the impedance is well within the zone 1 protection characteristic, but at end B, zone 1 only reaches 80% of the line length. The end A impedance relay will now operate, tripping its circuit breaker. But we still have fault current being fed in from end B. We therefore need to do something else to protect the feeder. To solve the problem, let's add an additional zone 2 characteristic on the impedance relays at both ends of the feeder. What will the characteristics be? Well, they both need to look in the forward direction. Let's make the reach 120% of the feeder length, and as we're not totally confident where the fault might be, let's give it a small time delay of 0.5 seconds. Let's now close the circuit breakers and energise the line. Let's now repeat our fault from before at 10% of the feeder length. The fault is now seen by the impedance relays at end A and end B. The end A impedance relay sees it in zone 1, whilst the end B relay sees it in zone 2. The zone 1 at end A is instantaneous and trips immediately, clearing the fault current from end A. The end B impedance relay is still seeing the fault, as fault current is flowing in from end B. It then trips after a 0.5 second time delay, clearing the fault from the system. To end it impedance protection schemes are used widely on distribution electrical systems and transmission feeders where we don't have any communication facilities. They provide coverage for 100% of the feeder length. In the central section of the feeder, the fault will be cleared immediately. In the first and last 20% of the feeder, there will be a short time delay before clearing the fault, normally set at about half a second, which gives the impedance relays time to decide where the fault is located. The decision on whether or not to use this type of configuration depends on the required fault clearance time of the network. If a half a second delay is OK, then the scheme can be used. If the delay will start causing issues with network stability, all other voltage issues, then a more complex scheme will be required, involving communication between the two feeder ends. This is covered in the next lecture.